Ah, welcome to the Legion Report, season three, episode three. Um, we're talking today about training smart um, and, and everything and what that means. Okay, I'm Ray Farrow. And I'm uh, Danny Hayter. Welcome. Um, hope everyone's well. And it's a week, well, week three of our podcast. God knows what week it is in lockdown. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, as Ray mentioned, looking at, we we spoke about nutrition and sleep. Um, and we feel those are really big byproducts of, of how you train. And now we're going to sort of go through some, some different sort of training um, methodology is probably the wrong word, but in that sort of framework, um, different training methods, maybe even some, some training. Did you stay over 40, Ray? <laughs> yeah. So, so like, we're going to talk about what, what it's like to start training in your, your later years, should we say? Well, mid, midlife, I'd say nowadays, isn't it? So training over 40. Uh, so just getting us started off. So we talk, we, we've done this podcast training smart. And um, what do we mean by that? Well, we, we, we mean, and it's like I always like to think about, um, and it sounds a bit like a James Bond film, but train to train another day. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so what, what, what I mean by that is um, you should be able to train so that you can come in the next day. And train um as simple as that uh, not so don't go down the road where you you smash yourself for one day and then you have to have three or four days off just to let your body recover from that because you you you're either treading water or you're actually stepping backwards rather than going forwards to where you need to go so you need to be a bit more smarter uh, how you approach your training now everyone knows about progressive overload uh, you know we don't need to go into the in depth of that um, I mean, the, the concept of progressive overload was um, w- was first first pioneered back um, just after World War II when they were recovering, uh, doing rehab tra- training for, for soldiers and stuff. So it is, it's, it, you know, everyone knows about it. And it basically, all it is really is, is just, you know, setting some goals and progressively slowly moving towards those overloading putting stress on the body but sensible stress not just smashing yourself and then expecting to add some adaptation but to do it gradually over a a, a, you know a longer period of time um yeah so yeah that so progressive overload you know that's 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 basically what you want to be doing um uh, and we just we we're just talking before we start there. So you need to really have some sort of structure to your to your training. Uh, and and first first way to do that is to set yourself some goals. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. that's what we were talking about just a minute ago, weren't we, Danny? Yeah. So goal setting. Um, it almost becomes so that you said the progressive overload side. Um, that comes a part of that. When you when you start setting goals, when you and you start to run, let's say you start a specific program, uh, you know a strength bias program. Um, you when we're we're going to talk more about programming, but when you're when, when we're writing programs and those pro- progressive overloads go in there, but as an athlete, you sometimes look at those first sort of three or four weeks and go. Oh, well, that's, you know, that's, you know, that's easy numbers, 40, 50, 60% worth of your, you know, working off of whatever percentages you are, but you sort of look at those first sort of steps and think, oh, that's, that's going to be, am, am I training enough? Um, because I'm not hitting the big numbers and, you know, people have these massive, big sort of like, you know, I'd say pound signs, but let's call them Alico plates in their eyes. Yeah. Um, so- <laughs> um in terms of i want to lift big numbers and i think you have to you have to set those goals and 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 so that one big goal that's sat at the top of the mountain you there's some steps that you have to get there first mm, yeah, um, yeah. to reach that you can't go from sort of a to d <laughs> um, you have to go from a to b and sometimes that might feel like it's actually you know it's fairly reasonable in terms of a you know maybe a month's worth of, of training it's a quite an, an easy an easy month you sort of think okay i'm easing in doesn't feel like i'm really doing much doesn't feel like i'm getting anywhere but actually you're actually moving from a to b yeah. and that is a vital piece because those those first starting blocks when it comes to um programming is is around a lot of it is around movement 
So making sure that you're moving correctly in those first elements. Um, and that's going to set you in really good stead as you start to increase that load, as we've uh, previously spoken about. So yeah. goals are really important. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you see, we, we see it all over the place, don't we? The, the mnemonic smart. Um, and that's like, obviously, you know, um, a good way of structuring your goals. Um, well, to have a format for your goals. Um, I always like the one kiss. So keep it simple, stupid. So you want to keep a nice, simple goal, not set yourself like, I'm going to get to the Olympics in a year. Like you want, you want a reason. Just cross that out quick. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, cross that one. (laughs) So keep it nice and simple, but also have a clear path. Would danger say then have a clear and simple path. So you don't just go from A to D. You have what in the army we call checkpoints. So you want to get to that point. Okay. And like Daniel said, stepping stones stepping stones gradual ones if you want a deadlift or like a 200 kilo deadlift uh, but you can't de- we were just talking about then you can't deadlift 130 then what's wrong with one of those stepping stones being 140 150 you know over time um and that's how you're going to progressive overload the system but also improve um yeah, a classic just- what Classic Sorry, I I'll just I'll just pick something on that as well. I yeah, think yeah, with on. those checkpoints, when you mentioned there around what you do in um, the armed forces, when you get to a checkpoint, you almost review what you've done and where you're going next, and what you maybe done well to get yeah. to that checkpoint, and what you didn't do so well to get to that checkpoint. And it doesn't change when it comes to having a you know a strength or a fitness goal. You have a look where you're at. You go right, okay, well that felt really good. I'm going to continue on that path. That was good. But actually I didn't feel quite great here. And, and this part of my training wasn't brilliant and I maybe need to adjust a couple of things. So you can start to think about changing and, and you learn and where you're, you know, where you, you, you're almost learning yourself what's good yeah, yeah. and what isn't good. And we go back to the beginning on that basis where you sort of say, well, actually, you know, to get to this goal, I've had to have, you know, every two days, I've had to have three days off, but I've hit my goal. But actually, is that where you want to be? So actually, we need to think about, okay, well, maybe our next goal, our next checkpoint might be a little bit further away because we're going to change the way that you that you get to that next setting. Yeah. Um, so it's just making sure that you you start, you learn while you go along. And that I, is- I think that's brilliant. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. That's, that's good. the well, exciting well, well, part well. of it, isn't it? I yeah, think yeah. there's- that's the exciting part of, of, of any fitness, like enjoy, enjoying the pro enjoying the progress, enjoying those like, different ways of training, enjoying the, yeah. you know, enjoying the aesthetic look, you know, if you, if you're, if you want to, if you want to look a certain way, that's a, a massive byproduct of training well and training properly. So um, yeah, I just want to just get that in there. Cause I think, no, that's, I think that's, that's really good point. Change, change your way you move. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. And I think the other thing is remembering that, um, strength if we're talking about strength strength is a skill as well and like you're saying that it takes time to master a skill and you need to consider that like, these are also parts of that 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 progression that we get yeah. our form gets better you know what i mean our movement gets better our mobility gets better as we move through those checkpoints like we just said yeah. and it's good that we may need to adapt some things on the way um like you say that's why we stop there stop there to reassess everything oh you know what since i've been doing this my front back's got worse i need to make sure i do blah 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 in my warm-up or maybe i need to add front squats in to get me in a better position and reinforce that those things yeah i I know we were talking about deadlift, but we're not talking about dead. You know, that was just the example. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, can, it works everywhere, doesn't it? It works. Yeah. In, you know, not just even strength. It works in, you know, if you're training for, um, you know, a triathlon, for example. You know, mm. you might look at the way that maybe swimming technique isn't quite up to where you need it to be, or you're getting the numbers in, but it's a real struggle to wake up the next day and continue you know, and, and, and do it again. So maybe there's some different ways of learning. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think that's a really, really important um, point that people enjoy the progress, enjoy the learning. And yeah, um, that uh, definitely helps. What well, we're on that one as well is there's no quick fix. So a lot of people, you, uh, and I was, I'm guilt, I've been guilty of it doing a quick six week strength program to try to get 
strong as I could in that six weeks. Mm-hmm. Really overloading myself. By the end of the six weeks, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, everything's tight. I'm laying in bed, rolling over, like, oh, I can't lay on that side. That's too tight. Yeah, Back, back's tight. You know what I mean? So, like you say, then enjoy, enjoy the journey yeah. to get. And, and and if you pro, if you're sort of like aiming for each checkpoint, like we're just talking about, or stepping stone, or whatever you want to call it, then that's that's the enjoyment to get to there reassess everything and maybe you may be even find that you're like you know what i want to i want to veer right here and go down a different path but you don't want to keep changing your paths because otherwise you'll find yourself zigzagging all over the place but again you know sometimes you just feel like you know you maybe last year's goals are completely to, the, to this year's it, it all depends yeah. but, but you they say don't they, they say the best program you're on is the, the best program in the world is the one you can stick to and i think that's, yeah. that, that's the, that's the most important thing i mean it, it, that's a really good point and i think we you know within so as as a lot of people will know you know we are um well i, I do you don't i come from a, a crossfit learning and, and, and coaching background and i'm now doing snc um my SNC training and stuff like that as well, which is just definitely slightly different. Um, so, you know, in terms of what we've always seen is the, the best, the guys that seem tend to progress the most are the ones that are consistent on the, on the same program within the gym. The ones that tend to start to lose their way a bit are the ones that go, Oh yeah, the gym program's great, but I want to do like three or four or five things extra every week. And that's when it starts to go a little bit pear shaped yeah, yeah. because, yeah, yeah they start to miss out on on what they're doing inside the gym and the gym's program and they start to go oh i'm going to do you know three days extra and i'm going to train you know three times a day because you know i really want to do you know in a, in, a, in my experience i really want to do well in, in the open yeah for yeah. example so i think that that is a really interesting point and i think i've seen that firsthand um, and I've been guilty of it, you know. I've I've done my first couple of years just just following, you know, the gym program. Going, oh, well, I want to I want to do something else. And you think, but look, I, I didn't look back. Is basically what I'm saying is I didn't look backwards and go, bloody hell, look where I've come from. I didn't do yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and I think you have to do that every now and again. And you know, that's just uh, you know, that's things like even if it's just looking at you know, recording numbers you know taking photos of yourself if you're looking for an aesthetic type um look but you know that that's really important to just make sure that you keep looking back when it comes to progress because too many people keep looking up and go like yeah it's still so far mm. away yeah. what what can i do to change i need yeah. to change it's too far away yeah, i want it yeah, quicker yeah. you know when actually what they do is go well actually look how far i've come yeah what i'm doing is working you know Mm. but i think that's where you've got to just sort of just be really mindful especially if you're a bit younger and you're you know and you really you know you want to get somewhere you know you know what it's like when you're young you want everything yesterday yeah yeah exactly you're impatient and the the, going to that one as well is think uh logging things that's why i always like to log everything log everything i do um and every now and then you, you you just you only have to go back a few books and look through and just think bloody hours that so all I was lifting then, yeah, when you, yeah, and you feel like you're not going forward, but you've gone so far forward. You just you, the problem is you like you say you get focused on where you're going, and not where you've been. Yeah, and exactly uh, right. Yeah, and sometimes you just all you have to do is turn around and be like, hang on a minute, I've gone halfway across the pond or whatever. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Or I'm up on like look how look down the mountain and look how far I've come. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, I'm too busy focusing on the peak, but yeah. It's just things like that. And I think that's why logging, uh, you know, not only as a, a way of understanding where your percentages are if you're doing strength, but also to understand where you've, where you've come from. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, which is easily forgotten. Uh, I think that takes us on to programming, mate. So w- w- yeah, you know, I think programming can be a little bit, I think some people try to make it more complicated than it is. Like, yeah, the, yeah. The definition of a program is just scheduling, scheduling your workouts, planning your workouts, and having a, a, a progress towards your goals, like yeah. you just said. Um, I like to think of, like, when I program, I, I, I love programming, you know I do, but um, when I program, yeah. I think of it like a story. So I think, right, this is where I'm going to start. Yeah. That's where I want to go. 
roughly that's where I want to be in the middle. Uh, yep. And then I'll start filling the gaps in as I go, like, as I start to try to finish the story off. And that's how I finish. That's how I wrote, wrote a program. I mean, most, like, you can't, like, most people could probably write their own programming. I mean, it takes some time. Yeah. You have to be careful. Um, and like you say, if you've got a progression to go through it. Um, but yeah, that, uh, I think don't make it overcomplicated. Um, no. But just don't, and don't try, like, so you get a lot of people, it's like, like, uh, um, you chuck too much, too much into it sometimes. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Start <laughs> off, just start off gradually and you can see why, oh, that, that only took me 30 minutes that time, you know, to do the whole session. That's not a problem. How did I feel? Yeah, yeah, and just gradually build stuff on. Don't like back to that recording. I think the recording there's again, yeah. I mean, for me, I, I mean, I, I like, I love same as you. I love programming. I see it as like, um, um, I don't know what's the word, but, but I, I, I enjoy the, the. the I, I enjoy the progress side of it of seeing where programming comes, so seeing where the programming is 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 is, is gone, so how it's how it's helped, and you see you see it. So for me, like programming is important as a as an athlete, but also as a coach to have a program and have something visually to to set and 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 go to. But also from a coach perspective, I feel that what I do see in in some in some programs is the lack of explanation as to why things are being done and what reason. So, you know, we talk, we've got friends within the physio world and the way that they explain something. So if that, if you've got an injury for an example and they explain as to why that, the rehab, they tell you what it's doing and why they're doing that. Yeah. This, the reason that we're giving you this piece of rehab is because that's going to do this and that's going to help that part of the rotator cuff, which is ultimately going to strengthen it, which is going to allow you to remove perfect that's an explanation not just do this movement good luck you know and and i think sometimes people get really really you know programming from a um from a purchase let's say from a, from a purchasing perspective people go oh well you know so and so is on this program so i'm gonna go on that program yeah. uh, i'm gonna just go and do that great i'm gonna pay you know 60 80 dollars a month and i'm going to go and do that program because you know the best athletes in the world are doing it so that's where i want to be when actually you probably need to take a little bit of a step back and actually get a little bit more of a personable um a personable uh, program and i think i heard it and i can't think who who said it but i heard it this week about having the right coach that actually cares about what the program is and you as an individual, what you tend to find with a lot of these programs that are out there is they're just, they're just rainbow programs. They just, you know, they're literally just, they're all the same. And all they do is that you're, you're just filling your percentages of stuff, but pretty much everything else is the same and you're just all following the same thing. It's not personal to you and potentially maybe not personal to your goals. So be really wary about who, where, and when, and that's a really good, there's some really good, you know, coaches out there, Ray, you, you are my, you have been um, my coach for a while now when it comes to um, personal programming and obviously with, with the gym stuff. And, but you looked at that, at, you looked at what my goals were and you, like you said there, you picked up a, you picked up my story and you, you looked at my end goals and then you found, you put the story and the goals together and then you work backwards um, and that's what that is the key to really good programming you told me why i was doing it you explained to me the reasons why this is going to be really good for you here because i've got something here that's going to benefit you you know uh, you know by doing that so i think people get very very bogged down with programming and it doesn't need to be that way um, it just needs to be like you say simple someone look at someone that cares like if, it, if it, even if it's just the, like a crossfit gym you know, a CrossFit gym is, you know, I'll always obviously have a little bit of a, um, a place for me because it's um, the, the program is there. The explanation for every, you know, the coach gives you an explanation as to why you're doing that at that time. At that point, if they've got an over, you know, an, an overview of a month's worth of programming, they'll tell you as to where they want you to be. So again, that explanation comes in. So, so yeah, I think you're right. Programming doesn't need to be 
you know, certainly doesn't need to be three, four, five hours long, unless you're at that level, obviously, um, you're at that sort of high, you know, it's your, it's your career for it, for example. So, yeah so yeah it's, 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 yeah, I just like, went into it. one there I, yeah, I just it. sorry I just that, it. It, it's just a big it's a big thing for me because people get so into um to programming i've seen some good and i've seen some really bad mm. um and I, I just think it is important because having the having the right having that right path set the path that we're talking about is the program right does mm. that make sense yeah so yeah. and if that's not if that's not done correctly and, and based around you as an individual um then you can sometimes get a little bit that's where people get a bit lost so yeah um well i think if, you, if you're if you're a coach listen to this i think you need to also know as well as programming for your clients goals so i've never mentioned and i haven't written it down in my notes but like i, I i'm a big fan of Kelly Sturette and and everything that he you know believes in he's you know and, and and I've done a lot of his courses. I believe when I'm programming as well is to expose my clients to the archetypes: um, front rack position, overhead position, squat, pistol, all these sort of um, hinge. Um, you know these archetypes that are gonna benefit them in the way that. Um, yes, they might struggle to get through that front back position, but over time, that's going to ha- like help them move better. Not just again, not just moving better in the gym and towards their goal, but in life, opening that T spine up, that thoracic spine up, is going to yeah. help stop them having that that hunch, having lower back problems in the future. So I do think that's other things that I think about when I'm programming for people to expose them to those archetypes and then yeah. give them, they give me feedback, then I'll give them mobility exercises to improve that. And over time, which does take mobility stuff, you know, we'll talk about this in a minute, and it takes time to improve. Um, but I expose them to that in the training. So they have the half of, and then in their warmups as well. So half the time they don't even know that they're doing the mobility stuff that. No, yeah. Uh, that so I want to do. Because they it's don't, always better. Lot of people don't like it. The, sorry, it's better. It's probably a good, good put, good uh, way to move into mobility actually, and the importance of it um, <clears throat> when it comes to training. Because I think, like you just said, there, uh, people don't like it, and uh, some people do. That's probably the wrong way to say it. But there are a lot of people there's out there big, that. Yeah, there's yeah. a big, there's a big portion. We, we, you know, you know ourselves when, when we program it as a session in the gym, that will almost definitely be one of our lowest that and overhead squats one of our lowest um attendance days should we say yeah so that that's um, that's actually yeah that's interesting because we uh, for you guys that aren't you know, for anyone listening that obviously doesn't have any involvement with within our gym we actually set we actually have a mobility day um so our so part of our program is a day where we do either sort of soft tissue work or we do some banded mobility or we work we really work around our mobility Mm. um for for our for our for our members um and yeah it's the um it's the least it's the least attended day um but we need to put it in because we're going back to that you know, train smart. You know. Well, that's, that's it. You, if you believe in something, even though, like you, you someone said to me a while ago, you you, know, you can't. Um, so you, your clients, you, you you don't program what they want. You program what they need. Okay, um, and sometimes you have to get them to get a buy in on that that need. Like we said just a minute ago, you can't. Like we, we want the gym session, not, you don't want to be just good at the gym. No, okay? no. Right. You don't want to be, oh yeah, I'm amazing in the gym. And then walk around all day, hunched over, yeah. back's killing, everything's hurting. That's why the, the train smart method is that like, be train in the gym to be good out, out of the gym. Okay. And, and, and be able to move around, be able to play with your kids, you know, be able to run for the bus or be, yeah. be whatever. Um, but the training is as much as it is for that goal, it's also for the goal of life as well without going too deep. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's a good, it's a valid point. I think 
we we tend to look at the gym as the be or end all. Um, mm. And I, again, I, I keep harping on about CrossFit gym. It 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 gets a bit like that, and we've had it. You know, we've had it in our, in our own environment where mm. it gets a bit too competitive for for its own good, and and doesn't it becomes less enjoyable because we're focusing on. Who, who did I just beat in a workout? It's not yeah. really important. It isn't important. Yeah. I think the, the whole point of the gym is to enjoy it. The whole point of the gym is to try things out. You know, <coughs> try things out in a workout. Try different different ways of breathing, for example. I'm going to try a different way of breathing through this workout. You know, there's some there's some great you know okay. some great coaches around Power Monkey that talk around me breathing while you exercise. Um, Chris Hinchall, they, as an example. So, and I think that goes through with the. Um, Training and competing, doesn't it? You know, training is training. Your competition should be like one or two a year. It shouldn't be every day in the gym. No, no, uh, no. And you'll find as well as if people were competing, they would do anything to win. And I don't be, I'm not talking about the rep. I mean, they will like compromise form, so they will just go for it. Yes, back, back around, and, like, and that's why we we like you know. It's been nearly four years now. We stopped being a CrossFit gym and being a uh, strength and condition gym. We use elements of, cross, of CrossFit. We use yeah, elements yeah. of circuit training. You yeah. know, circuit training, you know, CrossFit took that on. We use elements of that. So, And we use elements of, like, mobility. You know, we have different days for different things, don't we? Um, but anyway, but since we've done that, the, the competitive side of it has come out. And I, I you know, I'm like you, I, I, I've got a lot of thanks for towards CrossFit for setting me up the way we are. Uh, but sometimes it can be... I think people look at it as the games. So it's their little mini games. And I think mm. sometimes that's that's where it goes wrong. And I don't think that's that's anything to do with CrossFit. I just think it's the way some people see it. Yeah. Uh, you I tend to find a lot thing. of people, a lot of people that come into CrossFit are usually um, very competitive and have done stuff competitive in a previous, almost like a previous life. So you get like competitive swimmers, competitive runners, competitive sports people. So rugby, football, mm. you know, and then they come into this environment where they see this up like, more competition again, yeah. um, and really almost look at it that way. Yeah. Um, and you just got to sometimes take a bit of a step back from that. Yeah, and yeah. Like you say, when you're, when you're, going when you are a competitive person and you're going to do a competition completely that that all changes <laughs> um yeah. but if you're like you say if you're compromising your form every time you do a workout you know when you do get to that competition floor let's say you, that starts to hinder you quite a lot because yeah. when you are tired and you're moving badly that's just going to put you in a real really bad spot so i think that the the training the the, the the gym environment is it is an environment that you should enjoy you know have yeah there's nothing wrong with a little bit of competition you know it pushes you there's a little bit of a motivation side of that that's fine but you just gotta make sure that you go okay you know, we have levels so we have we we now gym we have a, a level system that allows you know each individual to do the same workout at a different level yeah, yeah. um and i think some days some days i'll walk into the gym and i think do you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna step down two levels today because you know i feel like i probably need to do that and it's going to benefit me so yeah. you know it might be a case of using a lesser weight it might be a case of running a lesser distance you know just to give my you know, just for me to just take a bit of a step back yeah. um and we sort of get into that point where we're sort of training at a certain age, you know, and I thought, <laughs> not. Yeah, that, that takes us on to the good bit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, where you it's sort right. of take a step back a little bit and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's just a case I've still, I've still enjoyed a workout. I've got something out of it and I've been, and most, and the most important part is I've, I've just trained with my friends. Yeah. Um, and we've all, we've all just gone through a really cool workout or we've just, you know, everyone's sort of learned something. We've learned something new when it comes to maybe, you know, a, you know part of a snatch or whatever it might be. So, um, yeah, I think it's just just take a step back, you know, just take mm. a step back and actually look at training as more of an enjoyable. It goes back to that progress side again, yeah. where we enjoy the progress of it. Um, it doesn't need to be a, a competition every single day, um, and just make sure that you know that you you're getting your your explanation as to what is what's being done and why. So, yeah, I think uh, like that uh, takes us nicely onto training in your 
off like you're not so peak years should we say like for, for me like training over 40 I, I as soon as not as like the day i turned 40 but definitely when i went over that 40 um year so nearly 45 next year 45 but Oof. yeah but i definitely felt a difference in in training not so much in training normally i can train quite well but the next day the recovery if those little niggles that I used to get would last one or two days, would last one or two weeks, maybe longer. Um, so recovery was um, or is something that I have to really, really think about. That's that's part, like a massive part of my programming for myself. Yeah. And um, for my older clients, I have to really, really think about the volume that I'm giving them. Um, I have to think, that's why you, you can't just add one, one program fits all, you know, because everyone's different, but exactly. definitely the archetypes I put them through. Um, um, but definitely, like I say, more the recovery side of things. And, and, and I think as you get older, you need to really, 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 like you should be doing it anyway, but listen to your body. And like you say, then know when to back off. Like yeah. I come in today, I'm, oh, everything's tight, my body's tight. Like, why force it through, uh, uh, you know, what we, uh, one of our level four systems where you could drop down to level three or two, get a good workout, get moving, you'd probably lighter weight and help you move a little bit quicker. You'll get fitter because you'll move quicker. But um, overall, you probably just end up just loosening everything up and feeling so much better afterwards rather than feeling like crap. So I yeah. just drop a pen. Um, but yeah, listening to your body is a massive thing, even when you're whatever age you are do you know what i mean but i think as you get older you have to think about it more i have two set days now that that you know are active recovery days so i don't like to have a complete rest day i do i do sometimes i'll just have a day where i don't do anything but i find that um if i do that that inactivity i, I you know i can't have too many of those because i just everything gets gets um too tight too sore you know I have to move. I have to move more. Really. In some way, yeah. Yeah, in some yeah, way. Yeah. Um, like I say, I, I one midweek recover, active recovery day, and, and, and on Sunday I normally have an active recovery day where I don't yeah. thrash myself. I spend a bit. I like. I spend most days doing some sort of foam rolling or, or some sort of mobility in my warm ups. Whatever in my warm ups, I've got mobility, but I do focus on um, having two days where that really do put more effort into it so like i've, I've got one of those little mobiles as uh, saunas so i'll have, maybe have a sauna maybe i'll have a cold bath uh, the cold bath is not obviously to produce information it's just literally the mental side of things like it, it clears it. I, don't, I don't know how to explain but it clears your mind and everything um or maybe have a warm bath um, with some Epsom salts in there. I mean, like I've had people say to me before about the salts. Do they work? Is there like, um, this is one thing I was thinking about the other day. It's like, yeah, there's probably not enough research out there on it. No. And that doesn't mean to say that you can't, like long as it's safe, you can't try it on yourself. And if you feel like you're getting a result for it, if you wait for studies to come out, you, you never end up doing anything really if you get a clear or waiting for a clear study to come out and say that this definitely works yeah then you'll never do anything and we should go back to before like you're treating yourself like your own lab your laboratory so you're just trying things out on yourself what does that you know and then feel did that make notes did that feel better that time you know yeah, yeah. I, I, I do it if it's a placebo i don't care if it's a placebo if it still works it really, i feel like it, it helps me recover yeah, whether it does yeah. or not you can argue the toss um time as well time time with that i think you, you know you're not going to get into one <laughs> you're not going to get into one cold bath and be like mm. bloody hell my whole life's changed you know it's going to take time to see some yeah. benefits from doing something over a period so i think if you're going to try something just just stick with it stick with it for yeah. a while and you know you, you it might just be that on that on that you know on that run in in an eight weeks time you start to feel good and you think 
you reckon that it could be that it could you know yeah. that's the thing i've changed that that could be the reason you know, you know we said it before about food and that could be the reason why i'm doing so well because i've had a month worth of eating really free. i didn't eat one good meal and all of a sudden i ran 26 miles <laughs> um you know it's you know it's over a period of time so yeah if you are doing these these different things just make sure you are you know you're trying things out and you're testing things out you know but you're doing it firstly in a controlled way yeah. um, secondly recorded and thirdly make sure you stick with it just like we say with a program don't go yeah. i'm going to try that now i'm going to try that now i'm going to mm. go and try that over there very much you know stick with something and just see where you're at with it so um yes yeah, um it's, it's it's an interesting one the training as you get older because i i've always i've always played football uh, average level um, and now as I've got a little bit older, you know, you start to hear the rumblings of, oh, you can't be playing much longer. How long are you going to play for? What I've done is where I've obviously where I'm training with, you know, in, in the gym and doing things in the gym. And obviously now outside the gym um, with, with the lockdown is I'm training smart to allow me to continue playing football and I'm from a sporting aspect. So you know, guys my age, so guys I went to school with or guys that I've played football with years and years ago, done, finished, nowhere near playing. Knees, hips, you know, yeah. overweight, you know, they've just decided they don't want to, you know, that's it. They've, they've, they can't play now. Whereas, you know, I've got I've still got a couple of really good friends that are um, even slightly older than me that are still playing. And the reason before that is because they've looked after stuff and trained smart. And I think as you get older, that definitely plays a really big part especially if you're doing stuff outside the gym environment it doesn't change between being outside and inside the gym things are still the same i still train smart i still look at you know if i do that is that going to hinder me when i want to go over there and, and actually do something else so just really being you, you are a lot more aware anyway as you get older aren't yeah you, you do yeah give um, it sensible it's a bit like it's a bit like when you're younger you go out you go out on the piss and you, you pretty much go hard for like three days whereas now it's like you know as once you get older year. it's <laughs> once every two months and you don't really do much um, yeah, you know yeah. you have a couple of pints but you know because it's a lot longer to recover so yeah exactly you know, yeah Dave, if you think of it like that if you get <laughs> drunk when you're younger you get out and go for a run the next day but when you're older you're probably <laughs> in your bed all day or if you've got kids you're just trying to hang out and trying to survive the day and it takes you longer to recover so yeah it's the same principle really and I, you know i know now that i can't train heavy too often i have no. to train heavy maybe once or twice a week uh, and that's like like not heavy heavy do you know what i mean i, I tend to like 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 a normal cycle really like my heavy week i'll have that and then i'll have a good few weeks leading up to that you know and a, a good delo week after the yeah. heavy week and stuff like that yeah. just being and i find i have i'll do more accessory stuff and unilateral work than i do big compound movements all the time now where i used to do a lot of compound movements but i still do those movements but i do a hell of a lot more accessory stuff towards those and unilateral stuff body weight yeah. training body weight training i'm getting into that more at the moment um because i can't do stuff like olympic lifts because i've still got um a hamstring uh tendon off i think um and we'll go i would like to do the next podcast actually with one of our with our physio guys our ex guys um and talk about rehab and and stuff like yeah. that that'd yeah be that'd be a very good, good one yeah but yeah really just good. stuff like that but even with the body weight stuff i think people will realize as well got to realize that that needs to be progressive increasing reps rather than going in straight in oh, i'm gonna do 100 pull-ups today and they haven't done like 10 pull-ups ten. for ages yeah yeah i mean everything has to be progressive again even if it is body weight you're gonna have a massive after effect um, there's a I balance think, isn't there there's balance. a massive balance i think when you, when people think about high volume i was oh, oh, sorry but when people think about less lesser weight yes we always say you know if you're dropping weight down the volume starts to increase which is which is how our programs should work but there's a balance there's a real balance like you say there's no point going out and saying well, i'm going to do 100 pull-ups and 200 you know press ups and 300 air squats you know for the for the next week every day because it just, just, just you, 
you're gonna hurt yourself yeah. yes yes there's no there's no weight but the vo- that volume is high it's still high volume so again progressive overload almost volume overload i suppose is, is probably what i'm sort of trying to get at, is you don't need to go hard on the volume you know progressively move your volume up um is probably yeah. what i'm trying to get at is just you know just because the weight's lighter or there's no weight at all it doesn't mean you still need to really think about um what you're doing with volume because um you know it could be just as just as dangerous i think especially if you're moving quickly hmm. yeah you like you say now like lots of people obviously can't get to the gym now so they are doing more at home yes um, yeah. and more so body weight movements are getting used a lot more, running outdoors. Love uh, What I love at the moment, mate, is just seeing people outdoors, yeah. being, being active. And it, we know it's we know it's hard at this time of the year because of the cold weather, the rain. But it's nice to see people out doing stuff. And I think um, I'd like that. Uh, we've said it many times before. I'd like to see that continue. I think it will do in the summer. Mm. But I'd like to see it continue over the years, even... Um, you know, post COVID, once COVID's gone, mm. you see people stay active, stay outside. I think, yeah, you know, having that connection with nature is something that we all need mentally, yeah. mental health. That's another podcast we need to do. I know we've done stuff on that before, but uh, uh, but yeah, that 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 nature side of things. I think we get disconnected through it through technology. Um, massively through technology and i think that's what has an effect on our mental health overall yeah definitely i think that's oh, yeah. a, a really big a really good point about you know being outside um, and even more so now we're, we're, work, we're, we're working from home we're, we're obviously training from home mm. um, and so just moving uh, and being out and about and moving even if it's just a you know a couple of mile walk you know every other day being yeah. out you know that that's i think you know we've had it in previous podcasts where you know going out for a walk you're never going to come back from a walk and be like I shouldn't have done that that was rubbish no <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. it's not not going to happen is it? <laughs> there's always some benefit you know mm-hmm. from it you know don't get you know it's, there's there's a there's some, some really good benefits to just just going out and moving and you know, it, it could even be part of your active recovery yeah. day and yeah, that's yeah. you know it's um I think being outside and, and let's say train training at home now and training in the garden and all those types of things has some limitation, but actually there's some really good things you can still do body weight. We've spoken about, yeah. you know, you, you don't need to have a jungle gym at home. Um, you know, you don't need everything that a gym would have at home to, to, to get really good workouts going, do you know? Mm. You know, it could just be a, a kettlebell, and yeah. that's, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's in, in some regards. So, I think there's there's lots of um, there's lots of people out there that are like, oh god, okay, the gym's closed. What am I going to do? But there's so many things you can do. Body weight, I say, going out for a, a little run every now and again, and just move. Um, you know, mo- moving's the key. Just move, and that's that's where you want to that's where you want to get to. So, but I think great great um great point about maybe doing something around the, the mental health side again we've yeah. we've touched on it in season one um massively yeah, yeah, massively in season one um yeah. but maybe we just touch on it slightly again in the next couple of episodes around um the 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 the, the exercise and mental health and just some of the things that, that come that, that come alongside that so yeah 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 lots to talk about like we were gonna stop um at this on this episode weren't we we were going to we were just yes. three but we've had so much um positive feedback we've had lots of people um listening watching on youtube so we feel like we need to ca- carry going forward and keep giving you guys good content or as, as good as we can like like yeah. we say we we um we, you know we don't edit these these podcasts we just it's just basically me and Danny having a good chat and you, you guys just listening in FBI style, you know, <laughs> just listening to, you know, and we just give our view and our view, you know, this is what, what we believe in. It's not necessarily what other, other baby coaches or trainers or whoever um, believe in, or, or they may even just be saying, Oh, to be different. Oh, that's not what you should be doing. You should be doing this. 
you know, everyone wants to be different nowadays. I find that's another thing I keep seeing a lot is everyone's trying to be different, reinventing the wheel when I think fancy. the most important thing is just to keep it simple and keep it to your client base. If they know yeah. a certain word means a certain thing, you know, you don't have to go and change that word round um, to make it sound better for you. Um, just I think keep everything simple. Yeah, I think on that, when you said there around, you know, there might be people out there that go, oh, what's he on about? Um, we're talking from experience. Mm. So we're talking from our own experiences and what we've learned in our own training methods, our own backgrounds, you know, whether it's a sporting background or or like you, Ray, with your, your career background. We're talking from our own experiences, but then also we're talking from the experiences that we've had as coaches as well and what yeah. we've seen with our own clients, whether it's, you know, whether it's someone in, in the gym, whether it's someone that we're, we're, we're privately programming and, and yeah, looking we've, after. We've trained, we've trained for over a thousand, thousands of people. You know, if you look at it for a long period of time, so we, we you know, it's not something we're making up. No, also, we do it. a lot. We do a lot of like studying. I, I, I'm a big fan of like Russian strength training, and I, I you know, do a lot of studying on that. I have done for years. Crazy Russians. Rounds. Yeah, yeah, but it got a lot. Of, there's a lot of sense there as well. A lot yeah, of madness. Yeah. I don't, you know, a lot of craziness. I, yeah, like I, say, but... I follow. I'm a big, big fan of um, Kelly Sturette. I think you know. Yeah, some of the stuff. Yeah, you know, I believe a lot in what he does. I believe you know, I, I follow a lot. I try to get all my knowledge from different different sources, as mm. many different sources as possible. Because there's yeah, loads, yeah. Of, loads of different ways, and I love Definitely. learning. Love learning now, where I didn't when I was at school. But no, exactly. Um, yeah, and so um, that's all we're trying to do: give you what we know from our experiences, yeah. from what we've gathered over the years, and hopefully, it's you know, it gives you. Uh, you know passing on the knowledge basically yeah and, and we've always still, said we? we're still learning aren't we everyone's still yeah learning. all the time all Stay the time open, open mind i think that's yeah. the biggest thing i think you know yeah that, absolutely I, I totally agree we, you know we keep learning and what we learn we we try and pass on as best we can especially to to people within our with our within our own you know our own circle and gym and and you know we're almost opening that little circle up with this podcast and this season yeah, so definitely. um yeah looking forward to continuing so we're gonna as ray mentioned there we're gonna try and do um some uh we're gonna get a chat with um our physio guys so the guys that are in our gym um and see if we can get them to come on and and have a good chat around rehab and some some good some bad and and we're probably going to hear about the ugly as well and some of that so uh yeah we look forward to, to chatting to, to cam dan and the team um in our next episode so um i think that's a good place to yeah to um to, to wrap up so that was our episode three guys that was our training that was training let's say it again train to train another day yeah. Um, yeah. So remember that. Yeah. Do, 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 do. But for now, <laughs> um, it's goodbye from me. Yeah. Stay strong for me. Uh, have a good weekend, guys. Have a good week. Um, just enjoy, enjoy life. Take care. See you later.